What's up, NBA fans? Dom2K on the mic, and for one of the rare times you will see it on this channel, the 2K actually matters. I was fortunate enough to receive an early copy this year, so I've been playing it for a few days now, and I wanted to go through some things I noticed, pretty much how I do every year. Play it a ton, document it, bring it back to y'all. I can already tell you there are some really cool details I missed, like the LeBron farewell tour and some jersey swaps, because I didn't come across it myself. Again, it's only been a few days, and I focused on some modes more than others, so just keep it in mind. It's not an all-encompassing review, it's just what I've run into and what I think so far. Still, I didn't miss much, and you can bet on that, while also being able to bet on sports with DraftKings. The NFL season is kicking off, and it's the perfect time to dive into the action with my partners over at DraftKings, the number one place to bet on touchdowns. Right now, all new customers who bet $5 will instantly get $250 in bonus bets plus one month of NFL Plus Premium. You heard it right, $250 in bonus bets and one month of NFL Plus Premium. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and sign up using my promo code DOM2K. Stay in on the action and use your $250 in bonus bets to bet anytime on touchdowns on DraftKings. If sports betting is not yet available in your state, don't worry. You can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy and have a shot at winning cash prizes. So download DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use my promo code DOM2K and bet just $5 on any wager and get $250 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code DOM2K only at DraftKings Sportsbook. We can start with gameplay, it's what everyone wants to hear about, and yeah, I would say my opinion of it through playing Triple Threat, going online and playing a couple matches, I've tested out the AI offline, there have been some obvious quality of life changes as there is from year to year with any 2K, it's what I've been able to tell so far. For instance, if you get on and just go to work on ISO, I think you can tell how much smoother the animations are than they were. Specifically with pro play, playing with a Kevin Durant feels more like playing with Kevin Durant than it ever has. That, that's just a being objective. The way you can get into a signature pull up and unlike last year, it doesn't look janky. It doesn't look like a certain animation just activated. It's really all kind of happening in one motion. And these are the elements building upon their work, which is empowering us to feel like we can take pull up shots over a defender or you don't have to be all the way open. If you have an advantage, you can actually use it again. I feel like this is work which has been going on for years and you can tell it's kind of at a point where we wanted it years ago. We used to complain we can't use mid range this that well. Now you get on and you have a Kevin Durant, you can walk down a smaller defender and shoot like he isn't there and it's working inside and out so i think you'll immediately notice the shots you can make near the rim and especially if you've got a size advantage it is not years past where you can basically just take a defender come help late and then bump the guy without fouling him and so he misses the layup you can still get that kind of animation off i have seen way more of those buckets go in though especially if it's a good finisher with the game on PC and the amount of mods which we'll release, it's going to be worth it to play the game offline, which means the actual computer AI matters. And if you follow me, you know the offline AI has been pretty inconsistent since 2K17. I think most recently for 2K24, you really had to use those Beyond Hall of Fame sliders to have any fun. Well, it's a new game so far. I can't say how challenging the base Hall of Fame will be. I can say the computer's gotten smarter though. They, they simply have gotten better. It doesn't feel like you're playing against some high schoolers computer science AI project. It, it's a well put together computer that does things that make sense. It challenges you. They actually make shots on a Hall of Fame. So you leave them open, you're getting burned. I think that's a little bit unlike the previous years where it kind of felt you don't even really need to defend jumpers. They don't make them at a high percentage unless you tinker with the game sliders. And you'll notice some tiny quality of life things there too, where I, I made a YouTube short if you've seen about the push dribble. I noticed Michael Jordan was going up. Up, I could steal this every single time in 2K24 and he stopped and adjusted and so those little small changes make me excited to see what else I'm going to discover. It is indicative of an improving environment for this AI. 
Here's a tiny little addition for changes on your side. You can enable smart plays. So every time you go down the floor, smart play will not call the play for you. It will make a recommendation to which you can accept by pressing L1. So you just get a rebound. It'll recommend a Tatum PNR, maybe a cutter or something like that. It's pretty useful to not just have to thumb through random plays. If you even use plays at all, I don't know who does or who doesn't, but if you do, this is kind of helpful for a few possessions where you don't really want to think, or maybe the plays you were calling aren't getting anything done and you just want to see what 2k comes up with i find it helpful i like the change another change you'll see is the shooting meter and boy i don't know if i like the base one that it comes with i haven't switched i'm probably not going to use it so i haven't thumbed through a ton i'm going to turn it off just using it to start the game though i will say i i don't understand it i'm not the best person to ask about shooting anyways but i feel like <laughs> it just the meter looks like you're timing it correctly every single time and it'll right now feels like it's always returning a slightly early or or slightly late once again probably a skill issue and just for the visualization of it i probably won't use it at all well this is really the extent of what i have to say about the gameplay right now it's only been a couple of days i'm gonna discover more things i like more things i dislike uh just to give something i dislike right now i think it's kind of just general to the ps5 version of the game 2k has felt slow for a long time it's felt like you're moving in mud and you see something you want to do and you press a button boom it's a turnover you were too slow you were stuck in an animation you got bumped before you press the button it's just something very unique to the ps5 version i have disliked for a long time let's discuss my career which is a fun conversation because every year it just feels like hit or miss and i'm referring to the offline mode right now obviously park is what it is people are going to play that as for the actual story or how you would grind against the computer you either get an nba 2k 18 which is unbearably bad or you get 2k 20 which you go oh this is kind of good and there's never any in between it's way too early to say where 2k 25 will land however i will just say i like what i've seen so far i feel like i've seen great common sense changes for instance your player's backstory is completely optional but if you do plan to partake it is in a very creative way it's basically going to a stand that's in your house and looking at this memorabilia from your high school days and you can go at this point it's replaying the games you're already in the nba and you can earn vc off of it you can earn some stuff i just thought that was a cool little tweak which made a ton of sense and of course i just wanted to test it i went and played and i did just want to comment on the other team's offense because normally in these games they're throwaways you're a high school superstar you can just go win by 100 i believe 2k16 was like that and i remember thinking this is a cool presentation but it's kind of boring to play well at least in the one game i played the computer could keep up because they could actually make shots they can't stop you but they can make shots and so you're not just winning by 50 if you're if you're not going all out the mode starts with you in game seven of the nba finals for whatever team you choose so once again not having to go through some long dry prequel not having to go through some corny story to start just throws you in and you go from there and once again too early to judge your story just based off the preliminary stuff though i can say it feels like something you could actually sit through 2k story isn't ever gonna be you know fully engaging it's not their main thing it is not be fresh and that's what i look for <laughs> once again you've got this full space which does include my court and i don't need to explain my court because it's a feature we had almost 10 years ago it pops in it pops out I'm just gonna say here there's no reason for my court to ever not be in a basketball game in an nba 2k game it just doesn't make sense they've been doing environments like this since nba 2k7 they've had concepts on how to throw little mini games in to keep you entertained and my court is a mini game that actually makes sense to a basketball game it's here and it doesn't need to be taken out and then put back and taken out and put back just keep it it's a cool thing we like it Speaking of minigames, you can actually access more basketball ones as well through your space. So you go in and you see they've got knockout, you've got king of the court. I think it's an awesome way to pass time and get better. It seems like something somebody actually put thought into and went, hey, this would be pretty cool and pretty fun. We can make it worthwhile where well, they did. And for those of you who I heavily suspect are going to struggle with shooting, these things matter. I didn't spend much time in the builder myself. I did notice you can just kind of pick a player template now. So remember 2K23 introduced the hidden builds and everyone went crazy. Now you can essentially just say, hey, I want my guy to be like Kevin Durant and make him like Kevin Durant. I doubt a lot of you will be using this. A lot of people like to build their specific build and they can kind of always do it better than 2K does. It is a feature I wanted to notify you about though. Then if you're curious about the city, 
look, you're kind of always going to get positive vibes from me about it. And not only are there positive vibes here, I can just say it's been improved. It feels a little bit more streamlined. You can get around way faster. The environments are beautiful. You spend time just walking around. I think they just snapped with the level design in every way that you can. And I'm always going to be appreciative of these type of artsy things just because I mentioned in every 2K video I do for these every year how much I came from the PlayStation Home era. So I'm just kind of geared towards it. It's a nostalgia bait thing. Ah, speaking of nostalgia bait, one of the first events they threw for us was a NBA 2K15 park reunion. You go back. I think we could kind of all see this if you're paying attention to the gaming industry. You saw the electricity around Fortnite when they brought back OG Fortnite. Me and my friends are going immediately. You know 2K is going to do something like this. They see the energy. And yeah. When this event is active, if you miss 2K15 that much, you're going to be able to go indulge in it. It's, you know, it's pretty far past time they start paying homage to their old stuff. A lot of stuff you grew up with is turning a decade old. That's just the reality. I am far past my expiration of my team. I got deep into the rabbit hole one time. I didn't like how I was behaving when I did, uh, but I still like Triple Threat. Triple Threat has been a thing from day one I loved, and here you can play in a beautiful environment. You take your player, it, you have the options for the three scores, or if you just want to 1v1 somebody with your threes lineup, that's what I've been doing so far. So this is actually a walk and wait process now. You don't just click on Triple Threat and it doesn't just match you with somebody. It's, it's using a park template. And yeah, as mentioned with the level design thing, this is just yet another environment they have created. If you want to give 2K shit for anything else, it just cannot be for their level design. Look at this. This is all really cool stuff. Okay, now for some of the nitty gritty stuff, we are going to be customizing ourselves with the offline modes and looking at eras. You know the era they added is the Steph era, so you go in, it's Kevin Durant's Warriors. It's the usual. You can go in and play if you want. You can do the sim if you want. I think, especially because I had the copy early, it really wasn't ready for prime time. I wanted to do a short about the 2017 Warriors, and right after the first season, they didn't even resign Steph or KD. They were in the free agency pool, and they stayed that way the whole time, so I can't say a whole lot about sim capabilities right now. Who knows what it's like after the update. I'm not happy I couldn't get the short off. I am happy about what I've seen with the cyber phases. Again, coming from my perspective, I'm just looking at it in terms of what do modders have to work with, because I'm not, at this point, expecting expecting 2k to have a bunch of different versions of guys for different years all that stuff all i want from them is good cyber faces and to be honest i can see improvements in a lot of them there are some spot on and you can tell they were changed i go to jj reddick and i say that is jj reddick hey go to matt barnes <laughs> this is matt barnes there are a lot of faces which look like they were damn near just taken from real life and stuck on your screen. And so I'm only so happy and giddy about that because it's a great base. And I, I've not even looked at all the cyber faces yet. I can see it in a lot of different examples. And this is really just a larger point about the graphics as a whole, because if you look at this game and say it looks the same as older 2Ks, you are lying. We're just gonna call it what it is right now. You're lying. And I can tell you why you're lying, because for years I have looked at what is capable on the PlayStation 5 when you're in outside lighting. So you can think 2K21 Park or even whichever game had that W triple threat type mode. Whenever there is outside light coming in, you see, oh, this is actually really capable of looking like a really good game and not dull and, and not regressing. Well, I believe I can see some of those lighting effects in the actual arena now when players are walking through a timeout or really, as a matter of fact, just in general, you could tell it has been amended to it looked like some of the settings you can get out of the photo mode. And this is just a good base is all it is. This is a great, I think it's a great looking game to just own on the vanilla version, which won't change on console. Giving it to PC where modders are going to be poking and prodding and messing with light settings. Oh yeah, they are going to get a lot of this. Give it a few months, maybe not even that long. This is going to be a beautiful looking product. And it's to a larger point, me and my friend would also discuss. When we are talking about the look of 2K, I said I grew up in an era where each of them looked different. And so maybe it didn't even look better, but it looked different. And that was important from feeling like I was playing a different game in 2K11 than I was playing in 2K13. And I feel like since PS4, probably since uh, maybe we go back to 2K19, yeah, each next game just doesn't feel like it looks different enough. I've never been able, in previous years, when I was younger, wasn't able to confuse it from game to game. And then it came out the later PS4 days, the early PS5 days, started confusing it. And I think 
people don't realize how much a game which doesn't look any different every year was psychologically playing on it feeling stale. Okay, I'm done ranting about graphics and I don't have anything to present to you with the PC version right now. I can't even get it to start. That is more on my computer than it is 2K. Honestly, half my games don't start right now, so I can't blame them. Oh my, I was going to forget to talk about Play Now Online, which after, man, I feel like I've probably been asking for changes to this for about six or seven years. The mode finally changed. Some very common sense changes I have been knocking on the door for for a very long time were implemented. Namely, pretty much a team selection screen. Yes, it is kind of back to where you can see who your opponent is using and you can pick a worthy competitor. How hard was that? Why were we ever running into blind matches where I could be using the sorriest team on this side of the bracket and he could have the Warriors? How did that ever happen and how did it last? whatever it's over and guess what all it took was a bit of critical thinking all it took was penalizing certain actions or making it worthwhile to use certain teams because that's all they were worried about all these years we didn't have a team selection screen it was just worried about one guy picking the warriors all the time and the other guy picking the Cavs, and they're never being used for other teams well to progress in the mode you have to use other teams and guess what you also can't do the whole thing where you go in and you quit or you get mad because you're going to start losing points which is going to keep you from progressing i guess you can quit it's just once again it's penalized and penalized in a way which makes sense because the little timeout thing whatever i can go serve my time and go touch grass right you can immediately see your opponent's record you can see the teams they frequently use so if you are trying to sneak and use kevin durant's warriors well guess what everybody's gonna know i can't prove it yet i heavily suspect the changes to play now online were ushered in by the popularity being a little bit more relevant these days thanks to vlad wavy i used to play pno way back in the day i was mostly streaming it i, I had some videos to uh, I did not push it forward Vlad is really really good at the game and it seems like they said oh hey you know what so there's a creator that people know actually playing the mode and let's see what we can do let's make some of these changes which <laughs> could have definitely been made a very long time ago whatever it's here PO looks useful it's what I want so I'm gonna partake in it just a little bit I damn near forgot to mention blacktop obviously it ain't changed much I guess it's cool to see them wearing different gear as they did last year because in years previous they were just wearing those stupid shirts uh, other than that I once again this is just a PC thing they're probably gonna put a lot of the old parks to be able to be used there's gonna hopefully if if this one modder I'm taking of is still locked in we can get an entire game mode out of it um on vanilla it's useless it, I don't even know why blacktop exists on console anymore just here on the end i want to tag on two details one good and one is kind of like meh one good the customization options for your hud i think it's pretty cool you can go in and just do it all in game right there you can see exactly what it's going to look like very tiny quality of life thing uh but the menus also in quality of life in the other direction why is it now a thing instead of being easily accessible as it used to be where you just press left or right to change i don't know the minutes and the quarters now you have to press X and scroll up and down to choose the minutes instead of just pressing left or right. And it's like that all around the menus. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know. And yeah, that's really all I've got to say about the game for now. I need more time with it. I still need to crack open the PC version to see what I can do. This one's going to be a long journey. And I'll just say I feel it's been aided by the cutoff of the PS4 version. Matter of fact, I don't even know if the game came out on PS4. I'm going to assume it did. And I'm also going to assume they didn't even mention it this year, even once because it, it is time to move on it is far past time to move on and i know the pandemic happened they had to care about it a little bit longer in this generation of consoles i, I can just say for right now in the first few days 2k25 feels like it might be the first actual next gen experience all around not just the graphics but the capabilities the gameplay the changes i i just feel like this is the first one which feels it is actually on the ps5 2k21 felt that way because the graphics were so pretty and yeah there were some changes so i i guess maybe i'm lying right now i don't know you get what i'm trying to say hopefully baby doms cries in the background and not being picked up but he is telling me it is time to wrap this video up so if you enjoyed it hit the like button comment and sub and hit the bell next to my name if you want notifications every time a new video drops appreciate you all watching and i'll see you on the next one